a nickname tells you a lot about that person. Bill Good Times Fetterson, I like him because he's an Okie. Yeah, I grew up in, in Tallahena, so I always root for those Oklahoma Cowboys that are, are big time. He did a lot in his career, uh, threw a steer in 2.9 seconds. That's pretty amazing. And from what I understand today at the Reride Rendezvous, he told a great story and was actually one of the finalists. Good times, come on down. Thank you. Thank the Historical Society, my family, and all my friends. It seems like half Al Reno's here. I'm glad. And uh, I'll tell you all a few stories. Uh, and uh, some of them are true. Casey Tibbs told me one time, he said, I could always ride better when I had a girl in the grandstand. And he was right too, I guess. And here's one Sharon Shoulder lets me tell. Jim uh, and I were at the bucking horse sale and I said, Jim, how you doing? And he said, old Bill, my belly's full of water. He said, my old heart's about to quit. He said, I went to the doctor the other day, and I told that doctor, if I died of age, that I put on my death certificate, I died of age. And I said, Jim, what do you want that on there for? He said, I don't want nobody there for sharing when I'm gone. You know, I've heard a lot of people get up here and give speeches, but Jim Bob Baltizer was the greatest. He, they talked 30 minutes about his roping and all the world championships he had. And he got up here and he said, I want to thank you all. I didn't get up here for talking. He said, see you later. <laughs> now, I don't know where anybody remembers Jack's heart or not, but he was an old Indian cowboy, and he was about 80 years old. And he took care of the rodeo horses, you know, and one day he tipped his money in his boot. And one day I walked up to him and I said, Jack, loan me $5. He said, how about, what'd you say? I said, Jack, I need $10. He said, I thought you said five. <laughs> And here's one on Freckles Brown. Freckles Brown would weigh every morning if he is two or three pounds overweight while he'd drink prune juice. And that'd get him over the hump. Here's one on Bud Ray. He used to work here in Oklahoma City in the stockyards. And he rode a lot. And he never did win much. But he'd always he'd get in the bar and he'd always tell everybody about how he rope and what a horse he's riding and how fast he tied the cab and everything. And it'd take him 30 minutes and he'd finally run out of air. And uh, this guy asked him, he said, hey bud, let me ask you a question. He said, yeah, what is it? He said, did you make a living rodeo? He said, no sir. He said, I live off of what I made. A lot of us do that, I think. <laughs> and here's a story about Dale Robinson. He would tell this story at these rodeos, you know, and he said he worked on a little ranch out there in West Texas, west of Pecos, and uh, took care of a bunch of cattle. And uh, he's out there for about three months, and uh, the old rancher came by, and, and he asked that rancher, he said, say, I'm getting awful lonesome out here. There's nobody to talk to. And that rancher told him, he said, well, you, there's a little church over across that mountain there. He said, you go over there, and there'll be some people you can talk to. So the next Sunday, while he saddled up his horse and rode over to that little church, and he got about halfway over there, and it started raining. It just poured down rain. And he got over there, and there's nobody there but him and the preacher. 
And the preacher looked at his watch and he said, it's seven o'clock. Would you like to hear a sermon? Why, sure. He said the preacher got up there and he started preaching. And he preached, and he preached, and he preached. He said, I looked at my watch and he preached for two hours and a half. He said, he finally came off the stage and he said, how would you like the sermon? Dale said, well, I don't know much about preaching. He said, I take care of a bunch of cows. He said, well, how would you compare it to your cow outfit? Dale said, well, preacher, he said, if I took a truckload of feed out, enough to feed 100 cows, he said, I wouldn't give her the whole damn load. <laughs> I want to thank uh, my family and uh, Lucky Herford. He's the one that helped me get here. And all the people from Mal Reno. And I'll see you later. Thank you.